Whoa. Hey everyone. It's me, Kanoe. Uh, back with a slightly larger video. Um, so... Recently, I went on a bit of a vacation. I, it wasn't much. I just We just kind of drove up to Colorado uh, with my family. Uh, we didn't do much, so it was just an average trip. But I did pick up a couple things that you guys might find interesting that I might review at some point. Uh, so, we're just going to look at those. None of them are really unboxings. So to count this as an unboxing, we have this. This is a uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Gachapon of some sort. Uh, so let's open it up. Uh, so we can get this marked as an unboxing video in the algorithm or whatever. And we open it up. Look who it is. It's Josuke Higashikata from JoJo's Part 4. Uh, wonderful. Um, yeah, it was a bunch of Part 4 characters. I would have been fine with most of them, so I was like, eh, sure, I'll spend like five bucks on it. Nothing too crazy. Uh, let's, let's get him standing, and he'll just kind of be there for the entirety of the video. As I recount things for you guys, uh, there's the stand. Uh, which one goes into his ass or whatever? Uh, we'll find that out together. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, we'll find, we'll find that out together. Uh, uh, yeah, my hair's not getting in the shot. Uh, no, we're fine. Uh, let me see, I, I would imagine it goes like this. No, oh, it goes into his hair. <laughs> Are you talking about my hair? Let me plug this in real quick, uh, off screen. Uh, but yeah, how are you guys doing? Uh, yeah, I, f I found the trip relatively enjoyable. It was just a nice time to relax with family, hang out, and do whatever works. Uh, and see if I can find anything interesting that I can't usually find here at home. Because for certain figures and whatnot, uh, home can be quite sparse. So I've stored them online a lot. So it's always good to find stuff to, or to pick up physically. Um, I'm having a hard time because my hands are bad. There we are, there. Plug that into the bla blaze. Mm. I imagine. There we are. And here we have uh, Josuke Higashikata. He's just going to be standing there menacingly because he's a jojo character is he even yeah he's there in the corner <laughs> that's cute uh so yeah there were four main places i checked out um which would be a uh comic book shop there uh the big one the mile high comics um a used lego store an actual lego store and uh a model kit store so from here, we'll go backwards to frontwards, um, starting with the comic store. I did pick up a couple comics. I picked up uh, the manga Goodbye Airy um, earlier on in the trip, but I also picked up Backrose Volume 2. Um, I got this bag real quick that I just store some things in. Uh, but I also picked up a couple other things at the comic shop that, he, that they just have like used there. One of which is a gray torch. Uh, this, for those of you who don't know, uh, this isn't the official configuration, uh, but this is Torch from the LEGO series Throwbots, or Slicers in outside of America. Um, and for some reason, he's gray. I kind of like it, though. It's it's honestly a nice color for him. It, it honestly works. Um, but yeah, this, this is a Slicer. I've never had a Slicer before, so it, it was just nice to have as someone who collects LEGO action figures. Um... It was a good thing to pick up. However, that wasn't the only thing I picked up there, uh, Lego-wise, at that uh, comic shop. Um, this was my last thing at the trip, so I could have probably picked up more stuff there, but I didn't want to be too fussy about it. So there, I also picked up my first Toamata. This is Pohatu. Uh, for some reason, they had him with the golden mask, and I was like, sure, I, I can pick up the... Um, normal masks on the aftermarket somewhere, and that shouldn't be too hard, uh, to do. Uh, yeah, he came with his boulder, which is always nice, because the boulder can sometimes get lost. But yeah, he, he looks very good. I love Pohatu. He's a fun guy, uh, and he's got a very interesting design. So it's always, so it's good to have a Toa Mata, and a Toa Mata of one of my favorite original Toa. Uh, so let's get them in the back a little bit, because we will need space for some of these items. Uh... Yeah, I guess thanks to Mahai Comics for having these things available. 
for me to steal from you for money. Uh, I'll put him more to the side. Give me a sec. Uh, there we are. Uh, yeah. No, it's good. I also went to a used Lego store. They had a bricks and minifigs. And I wanted to see if they had anything. Uh, they didn't have anything too crazy. Uh, that I super needed, at least for the price range that I had left, because you'll see. Um, oh yeah, this also came with the slicer. It was Ice's disc, or whatever his name is. Uh, Ski. There. Because they throw discs. Um, speaking of discs, uh, the one main Bionicle set I got at the used Lego store that I went to was, uh, Eerie. This is one of the, uh, 2004 Matoran, uh, Metrotoran designs. This one's the white one. If you saw a previous video, I got a maskless version of the green one, but this one does have his mask, so that's good. He also has his gun and his, uh, disc. So you can just disc launch. <laughs> it's interesting to see that this guy is as tall as a slicer was, uh, way back in the day. Uh, if you, if you can see that, yeah. They also got a couple smaller things, um... I got, um, it, the Eerie did come with the instruction manual, which is interesting, because it's just one of these small pouches. I'll put that to the side. Um, I also got a, a minifigure of no one in particular at all. We'll just have the minifigure there. You can guess who that is. Uh, but I also got, um, jeez, what's his name? The Titan that, uh, Makuta takes over. This guy's mask. Uh, I always thought it was a cool mask, but I never had the set. So this is just good to have, just kind of on the side. If I want to use it for something, it, it always looks cool, because it looks like a weird Hydro How, um, which is interesting. All right, so from there, um, I did go to the Lego store. The main thing I picked up, I'm going to save for a side video, because, uh, um, writer Strike stuff. I don't, um, uh, look at uh, Dr. Lock Lockdown's post. Uh, I basically agree with that. Um, when the writer strike ends, I'll make a bonus. I'll upload a bonus video uh, showing off that set that I got uh, because it is related to like a movie, and I don't want to give a uh, movie studio them do uh, promotion uh, during the writer strike. I'm all for the writer strike, by the way. Uh, go support them. I'll try to get links actually at the bottom of this video uh, so that you can check that out and go support them. Uh, they deserve your support, and hopefully, they get a fair deal so that they can make better better art, uh, while still being able to make a living for themselves. Uh, but yeah, that'll be a bonus video later, once the strike is over. Uh, it's in here, give me a sec. Uh, but, since I got that, uh, I got the budget for, like, two little side things, uh, that came with it. Uh, uh, so those sets were this one. This is the one I'm more interested in. It's a Winter Elves scene. It's got a squirrel. It's got a pair of elves. Um, it's very cute. The top has that squirrel, just other language stuff. Bottom has more like stuff on the side. It shows the elves. On the side, it's got nothing. And on the back, um, it's got a slightly altered version of that Winter Elves scene. The weird thing about this, um, it's that... I imagine they're just getting rid of stock, because it's like July... Uh, speaking of July, we also got this 12-in-1 rebuild into kit, the Fun Creativity 12-in-1. It's probably just a bunch of random parts that have a couple of interesting builds that you can build from. You see, there are those 12 builds. It's like 200 pieces. It's just a nice little parts pack, um, but they were just free bonuses alongside, alongside the thing that I got there that, again, will be detailed in a bonus video once the strike is over. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, so that's neat. Um, so yeah, from there, we go on to where I made some, uh, less than intelligent decisions, at the model kit store. Um, where I live, we don't really have any good model kit stores, so whenever I go out, I'm like, hey, I'll, I'm gonna see what they have. And the main goal for this trip was mainly to get Witch from Mercury stuff. Witch from Mercury, uh, Gundam Witch from Mercury is an amazing show. It's the most recent Gundam show. If you haven't watched a Gundam show, watch this one. It's very good. It's also very beginner-friendly. It's, it's in its own continuity. You don't have to watch anything beforehand. It's just a fun little Gundam show uh, with lesbians in it. It's wonderful. Uh, so I wanted to get more kits from that because I only had the aerial. I did end up getting other kits from it, but later on, uh, with more poor financial decisions. But hey, am I known for good ones? <laughs> But I did find one 
went for Mercury Kit that I wanted there. Um, and that would be the High Grade Michaelis. Uh, this is a interesting purple guy. <coughs> uh, not like that. But, you know, uh, it's... Jeez, what's this? It's up here. It's Shadik's uh, mobile suit. It was used in a very particularly cool uh, action sequence uh, at in episode 8, I believe it is. Uh, it's very fun, but it does show up throughout the series up to very near the finale. Um, honestly, Witch from Mercury has very few Gundams, all things considered. There's really just, like, five ish characters who use Gundams at all throughout the series. Uh, and a lot of the Gundams that are used in the series are basically the same Gundam. Uh, so it's very interesting to see just the amount of variety that was allowed to be shown in the different mobile suit designs within this series. Again, with the Michaelis being, uh, geez, it's, shoot, it's, is it Grassley? I think it's Grassley. Uh, yeah, a Grassley mobile suit. We'll go with Grassley. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments section below. Uh, but yeah, this is a Grassley mobile suit and has a very different look from, uh, like, the Jaturk house, which has a very different look from, like, the actual Gundams, uh, which has a very different look from the other houses and their mobile suits. And it's just very interesting to have such variety in a toy line that is also just a toy line that's generally solid all around. Like, if you pick up a uh, Witch from Mercury high grade, you're probably going to have a good time with it. Uh, so yeah, check out a, check out the show, check out one of these kits. If you have the chance and you've never really gotten into this kind of stuff, this is a good choice. So yeah, we'll go more in-depth with these uh, model kits boxes, because sure, why not? At the front, we have our basic high-grade Witch from Mercury packaging. It's uh, got a white background with a little bit of a blue flourish. High-grade Witch from Mercury. Got the logo for the series. Michaelis. It's got a nice uh, painted artwork uh, of the Michaelis doing one of its main attacks. Again, this is referencing episode 8 of the series. Bandai Namco. Uh, logo. Bandai. Um, on the side, we've got the price, which isn't bad for all things considered. Uh, Michaelis, it's number 11 in the line. Flip it over. Uh, Michaelis, more. Uh, more of that stuff. On this side, it shows uh, action poses, as well, as well as it unpainted there in the corner with all of its runners. Uh, as well as the fact that this comes with a stand so that you can do cool poses with it. Uh, the beam saber pose, uh, cannon pose, it's just hanging out. And on the other side, uh, we've got more like legal information and whatnot. Uh, a link to go watch Witch from Mercury, because it is on YouTube. Uh, well, wait, no, that's a link to the website, sorry. It is on YouTube as of right now. It might get taken off of YouTube at some point. But if you want to watch it, it's on YouTube. It's also on Crunchyroll. Uh, whatever works. Uh, it's got Shadik uh, Zanelli. He's standing there. This is the pilot. And a four front and back look at the Michaelis. And the back is just a plain brown box, as is per usual. Uh, so yeah, that's the Michaelis. I'm going to have to move this back, because from here, things only get larger. Jeez, uh, we're going to have to get some things out of the way. Get out of here, uh, Shia. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, again, that's the store that I went to had a wonderful selection. It just had so much that it was honestly a bit overwhelming. Uh, I was mostly looking at, like, their Master Grades. Uh, and because of something I got recently and did unbox on the channel, I decided to pick up a companion piece. So let me take, show you a look at the oldest uh, model kit that I have picked up to date. The Master Grade Gundam Mark II version 2.0. Let's zoom back a little bit. Uh, this is a modern reprint, to be fair. Uh, you can tell because of the blue Bandai logo and that Bandai Namco logo. But don't get it twisted. This kit was originally designed in 2005. This is like Hordika era Bionicle. Uh, so it's, it's an old kit. They haven't upgraded in a while. They haven't really upgraded the Zeta kits a bunch uh, that were made back when 2.0 started. 2.0 started because of uh, Zeta's 20th anniversary. That series is nearly 40 years old now. <laughs> uh, so I've, I've been watching it. I've been enjoying it. Uh, so this is mainly to go with my Zeta Gundam. At some point, I'll probably get a Hyakushiki, but I didn't get it one yet. Uh, but yeah, this is the Gundam Mark II. This is his box art. It's very vertical, which is why we had to zoom out a bit. It's the most vertical item we're going to look at today. 
Uh, but yeah, we got the RX 178 Gundam Mark II. This is the AU colors, because again, that goes with my Zeta Gundam. Again, at some point, I'll probably get a Titan's colors, but not yet. It shows it in a cool action pose up in space with like a little thing lying up behind it. Uh, Gundam Mark II, uh, Master Group version 2.0, Zeta logo, artwork. Um, on the bottom, it's got that same artwork. Um, on the top, again, same artwork. Now let's move to the side, and we will lower the camera again. Uh, boo 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 Whoa! Okay, give me a sec. There we go. We're lined up again. On this side, this is the side uh, with this interesting information, legal stuff, uh, just general disclaimers and whatnot. It shows the main figure in its base, because this one comes with like a special display stand that's like a like a containment hanger or whatever. It comes with three little guys. A pilot figure and some crew members. Um, it shows all the accessories that the figure comes with. The shield, the beam sabers, the beam cannon, the Vulcans, head Vulcans, uh, some extra beam energy, uh, and the missile launcher. It shows a bunch of gimmicks where it's got the head, the arms, uh, extra possibility in the arms, legs, the pistons, and the cockpit. And the front view of the figure, uh, obviously with a bit of paint done on it. Uh, on the back side, we got more poses. Showing it can recreate things from the anime, uh, from the Zeta Gundam anime. Uh, ball joint. I don't know why it's showing that ball joint. New technology, maybe? I don't know. Uh, shows shoulder articulation. It shows the mechanicals in the knee to show that it does cool mechanical stuff. Uh, it shows kneeling down. It shows how its hands work. Uh, and it shows it picking up a beam saber. Uh, and yeah, that's the Gundam Mark II's box. Uh, pretty neat. It goes well with my Zeta Gundam. Uh, I don't know. I think I'll probably build it before the Zeta Gundam to be all thematically nice. Um, let's get it behind the Michaelis so we can see the Michaelis at least for a tiny while longer before we do something stupid, which I did do. Um, so, I went to this model kit shop not expecting to get much. I had like a decent budget set aside. Uh, for everything, but I was like, eh, the Lego store is going to be the biggest purchase, and it was originally going to be. <sighs> but then I saw something that I had a hard time passing up, and as you will see now, I did not pass it up. Um, and that is Sonic! No, this was also there. It was a, something I just forgot to show. Uh, it's Sonic the Hedgehog. I've got a PS2. Wow, it's the console I grew up with. Whoa, how's that crazy? Um, but yeah. And I couldn't pass it up, not just because there was one of these, but because they had six of these in stock, and they were a pretty good price, all things considered, and it's just something I couldn't pass up. So, allow me to show you the box for the Master Grade Extreme Strike Freedom Gundam. I don't even like seed all that much. As you'll know, I've been picking up a couple seed kits, but they have a de and they have a decent aesthetic. But they're mostly because I have attachments to them elsewhere. The Blitz Gundam was one of the first gunpla I ever saw a video on back with uh, Jobby's old video. I have complicated feelings about him now, but he was important for me to getting into a lot of these hobbies. So, eh. uh, and then the Astray Red Frame High uh, that. I got because uh, one of my earliest model kits uh, was the real grade, and I really like it, and I really like the Astray Red Frame's design. But the Strike Freedom? Uh, it's just big and gold and beautiful, and it's a lot of money. But I had budget set aside for other things just in case I saw them. And then I saw that they had six of these. And then by the time I left the store, they had four of these. I didn't buy two, by the way. Someone else also just bought one coincidentally at the same time I bought one. <laughs> but this is just so good. And I've heard very good things about it. And I don't have to worry about putting, like, a lighting unit in it. Like I would if it was the Unicorn Gundam. But it's just a wonderful little model kit. And I'm excited to build it. It'll probably be... It's probably the last on my, uh... Uh, like, to-do list. Again, I picked up some more high grades from Witch from Mercury as well recently. Um, I'll show those when they show up. 
Um, but this will probably be last. It'll probably be even after the uh, Zeong that I've, the real great Zeong that I've been neglecting for like a year and a half. Um, but yeah, it's just a lot and it's intimidating, but it's nice to have, you know? It, it's going to be a fun build, I'll assure you that much. So let's look at this box. At the front, we have a magnificent image, of, a magnificent render of the Strike Freedom Gundam with all of its uh, gold exposed. Um, it looks beautiful. It's renders shown in promotional images. I kind of wish it was something more painterly like the Master Grade Mark II's box that we just saw, but it's fine. Up top, we have printed Strike Freedom Gundam, Zaft Mobile Suit ZGMF X20A. I don't have the context for that, because I've never seen Seed before. I feel like that context is necessary. I've never seen Seed before. I know this is from Seed Destiny, the one people don't like. But sure, they'll still make model kits from it. Uh, Bandai Namco. Modern logo up there, at the bottom. It's got that blue uh, Bandai logo for Bandai Spirits or whatever. Masquerade Extreme, there in the corner. Seed. <clears throat> yeah, Seed Destiny or whatever. Actual product, may vary slightly from images on package. Spandex Bandai Spirits 2022. At the front, embossed in gold, is Master Grade Extreme. Extreme Metallic Combination. As its gimmick is that it is very gold. As of course it is. Um, at the side, you'll see a very similar image, the Strike Freedom Gundam, as well as the exorbitant price I paid for it. Jesus Christ, this thing is too expensive. Um, but it is a big box. It's much thicker than, like, the Mark II's box. I'm kind of having a whole time, hard time showing it because it's so thick and heavy. Uh, Strike Freedom Gundam as well. On this side, this side has the smaller information. So we'll start here um, as I lower the camera for all of you. Uh, so, here we have it showing off a bunch of its gimmicks. Uh, so, this is the information seen before, disclaimers, eco-plug, gun-plug, whatever. Um, it shows its gimmicks, mainly its articulation, that it comes with water slide decals, as well as a paper, cardboard, multi-sand thing. That should just come with the other kits, since it's just such a small thing. Uh, it has beam shields. These are, like, pre-printed, uh, pre-colored, pre-painted, pre-sparkled up. They look beautiful. Um, it's... Covered in metallic details, clear parts, stuff like that. Multiple hand parts, including 3.0 style hands, as well as just a bunch of different hands. Uh, it comes with a display base, as well as multiple be beam sabers, so it can do that beam double saber, like Darth Maul bullshit. Um, it, here it is in a flying pose, where it shows off the wing units, as well as showing off how the dragoons can uh, detach. Thrusters having a bunch of just extra little flares and like hatch reveal gimmicks. It shows how it comes with uh, standing figures as well as a seated pilot figure, which is always wonderful to come with. It's weaponry, it's beam cannon, uh, as well as it's waste cannons, whatever the fuck those are. Um, Jesus Christ, sorry about that. Uh, hey, at least it's not falling over, because I also got a tripod while I was there. Uh, and we're recording on it right now, uh, which is good. And on the other side shows uh, the MGEX and its cool flight pose, Strict Freedom Gundam, the front pose, the rear pose, the inner frame, because the inner frame is a lot of the gimmick uh, of the kit, the extreme point, the extreme metallic combination. It shows it all of its gold. It's multiple colors of gold and like other metallics. It just looks beautiful. And it's kneeling pose uh, in both that form and that form. It just, uh, it's so beautiful. It's so much. It's just really good. It's a good kit, it, it, from what I can tell. I've heard very good things about it. Yeah. Um, so I will let it overwhelm the screen as we sign off here. I hope you enjoyed this little travel haul thing. <clears throat> it was an enjoyable trip to just hang out with family, uh, look at different places, look at different things, uh, and also pick up these figures and model kits and whatnot. Um... Let me know if you think I should have done this, uh, little purchase. <laughs> ah, I'm still unsure if I should have to this day, but it does look like it'll be a wonderful kit to pick up, um, and build and whatnot. Uh, if you like this video, leave a like on the video and leave a comment in the description below, and maybe even consider subscribing if you want. And as always, if you want to see any of these figures reviewed at some point, maybe, 
leave a comment about it so that I can gauge interest, I guess. Um, and outside of that, I guess I'll see you all in the next video, huh? Well, bye!